Hi everybody, this is Julissa. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel, everybody. And if you're listening in the podcast, thank you so much for being here. It is Sunday, April 16, 2023. I had to, I think I let, I just said this in my last episode that I was going to go down to Waveney Park, which is not too far from where I live, but Last time I was there, maybe about two weeks ago, I saw the memorial that they have for Jennifer Doulos, right? And I was like, I can't believe um, it was the first time I saw it because I went down a different entrance, okay? And I am speaking about the disappearance of Jennifer Doulos. In case you guys didn't know, if you're listening um, or watching this here on YouTube, um, I this she is the mom who disappeared on May 2019 from New Canaan, Connecticut. That's where Waveney Park is located. And for this duel, the husband um, took on, took his own life. I believe it was like eight months after she disappeared. He was um, in custody. Um, I think he was under house arrest, right? So he took his own life. Jennifer Dulo's mom of five children was going through a divorce and of course, uh, Mr. Fotis Dulo, okay, the dad in this case, he had a living girlfriend, okay? So as I'm getting myself prepared here to make this video and to make this episode, I was like, man, I cannot believe that in May of this year, it's going to be three years exactly of the disappearance of Jennifer Dulos. And it kind of, um, even though I speak about it a lot, right? Mm -hmm. I have done many videos and episodes about it. I feel like I seen the memorial, seeing the, the flowers um, today at Waveney Park and seeing how in that same street where I parked today, just to take some photos, which I am gonna show here at the end of this video. So if you want, if you're listening in the podcast, go ahead and look at uh, Julissa Designs on YouTube so you can take a look at the photos and the quick video that I made over there at Waveney Park. Three years since the disappearance of Jennifer Dulles coming up in May of 2023. And it's just crazy to me that um, like I said, when I was there today in the same street where I parked just to take the photos, um, that's where they found her car with the transmission on reverse and their headlights on. And it's just crazy to me how the whole case, I, I mean, I don't even know how to say it. Fotis Tulos is 100% responsible for the case but Michelle Trocanis, Trocanis, the girlfriend of Fotis Dulos, she is going to act as though she has nothing to deal with it. She is guilty. Even, like, let's just say, everybody, that Jennifer Dulos is still alive and she is just, you know, with her family. Michelle Trucanes wants to um, convince the public. She already convinced her family, right? She wants to convince the public that she had, she had nothing to do with the disappearance of Jennifer Dulles. Like, are you serious? You say Fortis Dulles is a manipulator? You, Jennifer, uh, Michelle Trucanes, you are the biggest manipulator ever. And let me just tell you something. One of the worst things that we can do as human beings is this, to believe a lie and then live that lie and think that nobody else sees it. Okay. That is one of the biggest psychological damage, gaslighting, whatever you want to call it, that we as human beings can do is to believe a lie when we know deep down inside what happened. Okay, and I understand that to be put in jail must be terrifying for anybody, especially somebody who has never done um, jail time. But Michelle Trocanis, the living girlfriend of this man, she, like, are you kidding me? You were laying yourself with this man who was still married, okay? And you guys know I am a Christian and I'm, I don't mean to 
point the finger so much like that, but we have to call it out for what it is. Michelle Trocanis wants to convince people, okay, wants to convince the public that she has absolutely nothing to do with it. Like that video of her years back talking to the prosecutors or the lawyers or whatever, she said, I had nothing to do with it. And she's shaking and she's trying to make them believe. You were laying with this man in bed, this father of five who was going through a divorce that was not even finalized yet, that you saw the mom of these five children that he had going to court, trying to get restraining orders against him, trying to, to do so much so. And you thought, right, that we are just going to believe everything that you say and think that you had nothing to do with this, right? As you're sitting at your house, throughout these three years, let's just say, celebrating Christmas, spending time with your loved ones, right? Celebrating Mother's Day that's coming up now. Do you think that you have done such a great job convincing everybody that you just, right now, for three years, you have been living a lie because you were able to convince people that you had nothing to do with this case? that you had not you you didn't know anything about it you had no idea what he was throwing out in every garbage can that he found in farmington okay because there's video of that you had nothing to do with that you are so innocent such a beautiful innocent person from argentina who has she's so naive she was also manipulated are you kidding me one of the worst things that we can do as human beings, everybody, is to believe the lie that we tell ourselves and then think that nobody else will see it, okay? You're not fooling anybody, Michelle Truconis. You're not fooling anybody. You know, for you to say that you had nothing to do with this, you were the living girlfriend with this man that was still married, father of five, Okay, you left whatever it was that you used to live before and you move in with him. Okay, and also, um, I think that's why Jennifer Dulos moved from Farmington, excuse me. That's why she moved because he wanted to bring in the girlfriend with her child or something like that. And you thought every, everybody was going to be fine with that? Even if Fotis presented that idea with you, you as a woman with moral values, this she's but it's what you're trying to tell the world that that's who you are a woman with moral values your family came out two years ago or a year ago talking about how you will never do anything like that you were raised in a great family you have moral values yet you were laying in bed with the man that's married going through a divorce with five kids and we're supposed to believe that you had absolutely nothing to do with this that you didn't know what he was throwing out in every garbage can he found in, in Farmington, you got caught red handed and you fear the you fear spending the rest of your life in jail because now he's gone, right? And you feel like he out of this whole case he has the most responsibility. You cannot tell me that every time they had a court day. You know, Jennifer, uh, Jennifer and Fotis going through this messy divorce. You cannot just sit here now, you know, after he's gone because you you feel like, you know, you really had nothing to do with it. It was his idea. You're going to act like you. I'm just going to wash my hands and move on with my life. You were the person that was there with him getting all that feedback what did they say in that court day when they were meet with their lawyers going through this messy divorce you are going to act like you he never said to you man my biggest problem is jennifer if i wish she could just disappear you are going to say like that never happened you know you you know I didn't know, I'm so naive. I don't even know what's happening in the world. I don't know what he was throwing out. You lay with this man and you didn't see any change behavior that day. Any change of attitude, okay? Fotis Dulos, 
from what we know, right, he doesn't have a murder background, right? So if he's doing something so big like that, you know, which is definitely led to believe from what the evidence was found in the home, you know, they found blood in the garage, they found splattered blood throughout the kitchen, the kitchen, um, the napkins were gone. That's what the nanny said. She said, I filled the whole cabinet with full rows of, um, you know, the paper towels and they were gone. He cleaned up something. He bought something. He, what a, what a killer he must have been. What a killer he must have been that he's going to commit this uh, outrageous crime to the mother of her, of his children, and he's going to come back to his lover, and she's not going to notice anything different with him. It's the same photos that I know. I had nothing to do with it. You didn't see any changed behavior, any nervous behavior. Somebody who was perhaps looking at his phone all the time, searching on Google. That's why I said not long ago, after learning the Anna Walsh case, I'm like, have they tracked Michelle Trocones Google searches from that day? Is that even possible to do? Because something like this, this man got his friend's um, truck. He got his bicycle, right? He knew... Um, Jennifer's schedule, so much so, all of that is definitely a planned out event that was going to happen, okay? And this is so crazy because he's dead, right? He's he's not going to be, you know, now he's in God's hand. His life, his soul is in, in God's hand, right? So Michelle Troconis needs to... um come clean and she needs to to say what she knows that we all know that she knows everybody knows that michelle troconis knows and she doesn't want to say it okay she thought it was gonna work out unfortunately it didn't work out like that and now she he he you know, a coward that he is, that somebody who's going to kill the mother of their five children, have no mercy, owes her family millions of dollars. He's the a coward, right? But he's gone, right? She probably seems like, why are they accusing me? Like, you know, it was perhaps his idea, and it probably was. But that doesn't mean that she's innocent, how full is it of her to think that we're just going to believe that she's such an innocent person, that she has nothing to do with it, that she didn't see him buying anything out of the ordinary. She was living in the same house with him. She was laying in bed with this man, and he was not, he had no sleepless nights, right? No, no freaking, you know, worrying looks, concern, things like, like that. What were their conversations before, Okay. Because a lot of the times, you know, like he needs, you need to understand, like this man was living such a life that he owed everything he owed, like money wise, belonged to Jennifer's family. And he wanted to, he wanted to bring in the girlfriend, use the, the money from Jennifer's family to probably give her gifts, give her the lifestyle, that house in Farmington, and everything she ever wanted from the money that Jennifer Dulo's family had that he owed to them. And we are, we are, as a public, looking at it from the outside, we are to believe that Michelle Draconis has nothing to do with this. And he wants to put that on the on the note that he left when he died. Some type of promise promises were were made between the two of them. Let me tell you something. We've seen it over and over again. This case, I remember when they they got arrested, um, Foti Zulus and Michelle. I was like, finally, like it's so obvious. Like I said to you guys all the time, all these men 
think that they're just going to have a living girlfriend kill their wife and then just be like, oh, we don't know what happened. Let's move on with life, you know? Like, how did you see, Michelle Troconis, how did you see with your family during Christmas, let's just say, and you just, like, you believe that lies for so long already that it doesn't even come to your mind? Jennifer Dulles doesn't come to your mind? Her five kids that now, you know, are living with the, without their mom? Because on the, the days prior, I think she, she disappeared May 24 of 2019. The day prior to her disappearance, you and Fotis, you know that you and Fotis were speaking about this. You guys promised each other something. And that promise, that's why he put your name on that note when he killed himself. But the man that you the, the man that you lay yourself with, that you move in with, even though you knew he was married, suggested something to you that he was gonna do that was gonna make all his problems go away. Apparently that's what he thought. Okay. And this planning idea, all this time that you both had with each other, you know, the thoughts that came to his mind. If you knew this man so well that you were willing to move in yourself with him, even though you knew he was married, you would have noticed a change behavior on him. I, I hope so. I know, right? Like, not I hope so. I know you did. And I know you ask. And I know you wonder what was going on with him. And I'm sure he said it. And that makes you a suspect and conspirator. And you are so guilty. I don't know what lie you're trying to believe yourself, thinking that you had nothing to do with this. The thing was that what he presented to you, because all you wanted to do was continue on with your life without having Jennifer in the way. And perhaps you thought that was gonna be the only way and he promised you it will be everything will be fine. I wouldn't you know you will never be you know involved everything will be fine and that's it. And those were the conversations that you both to the two of you were having and you know this Michelle Troconis you know this. Okay, and the sad thing that uh, while you two were having those conversations and planning, okay, Jennifer Dulles was planning perhaps, you know, Memorial Day weekend with her kids, the summertime with her kids, you know, what the plans was gonna be that summer, you know, what, what vacation planning they were gonna do. And her, you know, and on the other hand, there were you laying with her husband, planning her disappearance. I don't know how you sit at a table and think that everybody's just going to believe that you had nothing to do with it. I don't know, like, I don't know when one of the worst, thing, worst things that any human can do is believe their own life and think that everybody else is just gonna go out with it. Thank you so much everybody for watching this video. Thank you so much for listening, God bless.